putting that time for exercise and effort actually makes me stronger at work because I would if I were only to work it just wouldn't be fulfilling for me and that would make me frustrated which would have a negative impact on my work because in a way science is also a creative um, job because you always need to think of like how do I answer the question how do I design my experiments to get an answer to the to the question I'm raising and uh, so you do spend a lot of time in the lab I mean where you walk around in the lab and work standing but it's not that you do any exercise and for me like just this physical component just made like gives my mind The most memorable was, I think, uh, a race I did together with Vicky and uh, Samira. Mm. It was like uh, we, the women used to start with the amateur men. And I think it was also the classic race, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. And uh, we just ended up leading the race throughout. And that felt like really great because it was also, I don't think it was that the men wanted us to lead the race throughout. I think they just had struggle keeping up. And um, and that was fantastic because sometimes there were breakaways from the men, but we always managed to work together and, and catch them. And what that was really, really, really nice and rewarding. I am Vaiki Vinky and this is the Working Athlete Podcast. Here, I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, time management and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes. Today's guest is one of the most positive persons I have the privilege of knowing and interacting. She moved to India in 2012 to pursue her PhD in neuroscience at National Center of Biological Sciences and has got into cycle racing at BBCH. Although she has been cycling all her life, mostly for commute, she has quickly grown to love cycle racing and has excelled at the sport. She won many races and has inspired many along the way. Her name is Dr. Lena Robra. In this episode, we talked about her cycling journey, how she managed to find time to train and race while completing a demanding PhD program, how she plans to get back to racing after having two kids and demands of time from job and life in general. Let's dive into the chat. Welcome to the Working Adler Podcast, Lena. It's Thank great you. to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Right. So, uh, Lena, uh, I want to kind of start off this discussion to by understanding um, a little bit about what is work for you now. Ah, what is work for me now? Um, I just started a new job. So I'm by training a scientist and by heart still a scientist. Uh, background is biochemistry, then PhD in developmental neurobiology. But then I wanted to move a bit into sustainability because I felt that some bit more like the need of the hour. And so I first worked for three years for the Bangalore Sustainability Forum. And since September, I'm working for Swissnext, that is sort of the science research and innovation outpost of the Swiss government. Uh, and that's located here in uh, ba Bangalore Central. And yeah, we are trying to connect like uh, Swiss research and, and innovation with Indian research and innovation and hope that we make the most of it. And it's also, again, a focus on sustainability, which is why I chose to take this job on. That's awesome. So um, also let us uh, go a little bit back and mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your uh, childhood and how was it in terms of like sport and activity? Mm. Okay, so I uh, I grew up in Germany um, and from like, I mean, in the, the first years in the city, but then when I was five, I think we moved to the village and it was very normal or it is very normal in Germany to just walk a lot and to uh, cycle a lot. So even in primary school, I used to cycle to the next village and it's also an environment where I think parents have a lot more trust in the sense I used to cycle alone in primary school to school already. And I continued to cycle to my next school, which would then be like seven kilometers or 10 kilometers. And essentially cycling was the mode of transport until, um, no, actually it was throughout the mode, my, my mode of transport. And it's just 
normal in the sense my mom cycles to work and my brother cycles to work and physical education is part of school also in primary school and yeah it's throughout school it's not an elective subject it's mm -hmm. mandatory right. so it's a very normal thing for us to do right. so what what is so you basically cycling throughout your life uh, i think so yeah. yeah i mean i remember uh, we did a cycling tour once when my brother i think was five so i would have been like nine or ten and we cycled from hamburg to kiel in uh, north germany and <laughs> my parents were like yelling at my brother to like keep up and then only like a few kilometers later we figured that he had a flat tire <laughs> so <laughs> poor guy <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. so, but uh, yeah as such it's like even family vacations we do occasionally on the bicycle okay and so uh, you you guys were uh you know less than 10 at, at that time yeah yeah you guys yeah uh, okay so yeah. basically your parents were uh, uh encouraging that way to kind of very much you know, always uh, on the bike yeah. yeah 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 leading by example and also every time like these short easter breaks or so it would we would be on the cycle and do a picnic somewhere and get lost on the way somewhere <laughs> nice. so yeah it's just so normal for us to have cycles and to go everywhere with cycles awesome awesome so what uh what were the some of the longer trips that you guys did as kids with your parents i mean yeah i think the longest was really like this from hamburg to kiel i don't know how much it is in kilometers but like we did have i think two or three stops like we had a tent with us and then mm. yeah you sort of camp somewhere um my dad is now doing regularly cycling trips with like a few of his study friends so like once or twice a year they just like go and for a week and cycle and my parents also do that with their friends now still and uh yeah so we didn't do like a lot of touring it would more you take your cycle somewhere and then you would like do day trips around right. there yeah yeah nice so what uh coming to india right? mm. When was it that uh, you came to India and uh, mm -hmm. what what got you here? Ah, okay. Um, I came here in 2012 mm -hmm. for my PhD. Um, I did my master thesis in Barcelona and the research institute in Barcelona was essentially like a partner institute of the institute here. And I thought like, why not try something new and as a phd student you're like without family you're relatively without responsibilities so i thought i come and i see whether um i like it and um i also got myself immediately a bicycle but at that time like a phd stipend was 16000 rupees so what i bought was the uh, Dudwala bicycle for 2000 rupees <laughs> and my friends always used to joke oh she's coming with the tank and i was like sort of um uh yeah rattling to to yeah. campus uh, but uh i managed NCBS campus, yeah right? ncbs campus okay. so the hostel was in yelahanka uh -huh. um next to the newtown bus stand and then yeah you would go through judicial layout or gkvk and Right. Uh, so <laughs> go to on, NCBS. On, on the Hero Dudwala. Uh, yeah, yeah, on the okay. Dudwala cycle. Nice. Yes, I used to nice. do that. Yeah. No. So that, that's how yeah, you kept, you know, uh, with your, uh, kept with the tradition of commuting by bike, uh, yes. going uh, yes. even after coming here. Yes. But then, uh, yeah, you eventually got an MTB or something like that. Uh, yeah 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 so the next was that uh, so we had a we had a german postdoc at the institute who was also very much into cycling and uh, he gave me then his uh, hercules act 110 which is like i mean as some people might know a much more rideable yeah. cycle <laughs> it was one of these uh, hybrid bikes yes yeah. exactly mm. exactly and then and my flatmate at that time um kabir he was also a cyclist and uh so we used to cycle together and uh, then um, there was uh, the 
in the newspaper it said that the that a new bike store had opened and we used to go to Everest Theater for the documentary movie so we thought we'd check out the new bike store next to it and uh, yeah that's where I met like the voice of Krankmeister including Nickel and I wanted to buy a mountain bike but um, I impressed Nickel with what I wanted <laughs> but uh, I just didn't know where I had the money to afford what I wanted so um, yeah I never bought a bicycle from yeah. Krankmeister I have to disclose here <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you uh, so you, you met Nikhil there. Yes, uh, I met Nikhil there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, before we talk about Crankmaster a little bit more, <laughs> uh, what kind of uh, riding you guys did? Uh, you Kabir and uh, so at that time we would really only commute. Like at that time, Bangalore also had a still bit a bit more of nightlife. So mm-hmm. we would like uh, go to something called culture counter mm-hmm. counter counter culture. Counter culture. Yeah. So I don't even know where that. Like I couldn't even place it on the map now or. Uh, at uh, Jaga that was on KH double road uh, opposite to the to the bus stand mm. so we would like do these sort of I mean basically we used the bicycle as, as mode of transport because also Ola Uba wasn't there at that time mm. and it was the most independent and cheapest way of transport yeah mm. so I didn't really use it for access we did one ride to Hesagata I think with the NCBS crowd mm. which was also very funny because Darius I mean I think you know Darius even the German postdoc, like he has like really big ties and he was always grinding on the highest gear. He would have been in the first two races only or okay. so. Uh. And uh, he is a very impatient guy. So it was really hard for him to ride with people who weren't so fast. Yeah. But yeah, we did that. And in the beginning, I also used to run a bit more. So I used to run for exercise and okay. cycle was really just a commute. For commute yeah. mostly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So once you um, kind of found Crankmeister mm-hmm. and uh, was uh, trying to buy, buy a bike, or something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you you guys did some mountain biking and stuff uh, together, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Um... <laughs> So what happened then? So one is I gave like my Hercules ACT 110 for service, which yeah. they gla- which they took because Pavan and Monica at that time already thought I would be a good fit for Nickel. Yeah. And so they made an exception. <laughs> like, right. There's a lot of story <laughs> behind the scenes. And my flatmate, on the other hand, really liked Nickel. So yeah. he also th- thought Nickel would be a good fit for me. Yeah. So they started pushing behind the scenes that like um, Nickel would be there when I would come to pick up the bicycle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay. And so then uh, Nickel and me started riding, but Nickel didn't tell like the boys at Krankmeister that he actually started riding with me. And that was really funny because we were at, uh, what's that area? Not Hesa, I mean, when you go out uh, towards Hesagata from Yelahanka, uh, where the Velohankans always ride, like mm. that uh, Ayurvedic Institute is there and... See, yeah, been... yeah, the sperm bank and all that. Thing. Yeah, 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 that okay. area. The yeah, that... Got, uh, grasslands. And... Yeah, somewhere okay. there. Uh-huh. And so then we got a flat tire, so Nikhil needed to call like the store saying that he is late, and so they're like something is <laughs> off. <laughs> um, yeah, and so yeah, then Nikhil and me started dating. I still couldn't. Oh no, but we actually started dating because I didn't have Facebook, and he told me like, oh, there's this guy selling his mountain bike secondhand on Facebook. And I was like, can you do it? Because I don't have Facebook. And so yeah. then uh, he helped me getting my mountain bike, the Cube, which we still have and uh, love. Right. Um, and yeah, that's actually, I think, the first bicycle I actually myself bought. Mm. And uh, then I bought off the Surly Cross Check from Nickel. Mm. And uh, in fact, that's the bike I did my first BBC H ride ever on, like the time trial. And it was so funny because I had never ridden uh, drop bars before right. the race itself. Yeah. So I we just like changed the flat bar to to drop bars. And I was like in the in the start line, and I was like, oh, so how do I shift gears? <laughs> in this? And Sabina was there at that time, and Sabina was just like, oh God, like what's this gonna be like this? <laughs> And so, yeah, then I like, uh, I, I rode the race, actually in my mom's bicycle shorts as well. And then we wanted to pack up and leave, but then it turned out I came second. So I think that wasn't a bad start for the, oh, for the yes, yeah, Tim Tim really... was there at that time and Fariel was there. So Fariel came first, I came second and Tim Tim came third. Oh, that's so funny. When was this? What year? Uh, the, I, 
Wait, I met Nickel 2014, so it must have been 2015 because we right. were, so January 2015. Uh, and that entire season I wrote actually on the Surly Cross Check. So like even the Nandi uh, Epic, which in that year, I think I finished third, but only because Sabina had an accident. <laughs> Otherwise she had, would have been third and I I would have been fourth. And Fariel finished like half an hour before me. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's quite funny, right? Uh, you, you, your first uh, ride on a road bike was on a thin race. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, 2015 mm. um, was you participated in most of the BBCH races, right? I think right? so. Yeah, I uh, think like I mean, the first one was the ITT, and I think from then on, like yeah, we also we won the team ten trial. That was Sabina Mevash and me. Um, I think from then on, I was just like full on in. I remember like, and at that time I didn't like, I didn't know anything. I didn't have a coach. I didn't know nothing. So I remember the classic race, for example, I had this like great idea that like, uh, I could sort of like catch up. So instead of working with the people like Tim Tim or Sabina and, and so I like, it's like, no, no, I catch the group beforehand. And I ended up like completely dead because I was riding all alone, always between the two groups. Right. And I think Tim Tim might have even over overtaken me in the end <laughs> because <laughs> I, yeah. I just wasted a lot of energy unknowingly. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the first season, uh, first few seasons, in fact, is typically like that. Uh, you know, we tend to do a lot of, uh, you know, mistakes because we don't know much. Right. Uh, like I, I remember I, I did a lot of uh, stupid mistakes in my first uh, <laughs> many races. In fact, <laughs> I still do. But <laughs> I also remember like when we started started riding like yeah. and that must have been that season like was that uh um yeah 2015 like one is like we we started doing our nandi rides we drove with the car into the first until the nandi turnoff and then onto the mcdonald's and then we started riding from home oh. and our, our ride nutrition was like snickers yeah. <laughs> so it also clearly shows and it was also funny because that year and uh, nikhil and me went home to do a trans alp like yeah. so we rode from gelsenkirchen in south germany to the uh, garda lake in uh, italy together with my best friend and her boyfriend and so we felt like really strong and good about ourselves like yeah yeah like bring it on and so then her boyfriend uh, my best friend's boyfriend who was planning the, the tour was like okay so he planned like 14,000 meters of altitude for one week <laughs> and, and that too with snow in like the top areas <laughs> So, um, so we went there and, um, after the first day, Nika gave up <laughs> and we hadn't even <laughs> reached like the heights. And so my best friend and me were sitting together and we were like, okay, if we want to like still be friends after this, it's better we split. <laughs> and so Nika and me went to a bookshop and we bought like just a map of the Alps. And so my best friend and her boyfriend, they went uh, and did the plan tour where Nika and me did like a relaxed tour through the valley. I must say today it was like the greatest vacation in time we've ever had. It was a fantastic experience and Europe is so, you really don't need to plan. Like right. everything is so easy. Like, I mean, it was just like a little dumb that we had like this mountain bikes with this huge ass tires because I was prepped to go through the mountains and we were like on that tarred like cycle lanes throughout and always like, mm. <laughs> and so it felt a bit of waste of my tire. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it was a fantastic tour and, uh, how many days uh, did you guys end up, uh, so we also took, Alps? uh, seven days in total. And then we did like, I think three days, like at the Lago di Garda, but like we essentially went the Via Augusta, which is like a sort of more of a touring mm -hmm. thing through the Alps. And we went like once we took the lift up the mountains and I mean, there are like so many good stories about this trip because, um, and I, I think you can edit it for like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Like once, for example, we we went past a mini golfing and it was like, then we went one kilometer down and it was down and it's like, no, I want to play. So we actually cycled back up to play one round. And then once we took the lift up and we went like out of the lift and to do the downhill trail. And I'm like, yeah, it's his first downhill trail. And the guy, the, the other guys, they look at me. How can you like <laughs> let this poor boy just ride down here? And once I again wanted to take the lift up. And, uh, but you had to like cycle up a little bit and Nikhil was just so slow, man. And so we missed the last lift and I was so upset with him. 
<laughs> but then we ended up staying in some small village and we has the we had the best pizza of our lives until today and the the waitress after a while went to me she's like she's a bit difficult no? <laughs> 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 so lots of uh, lots of lots of that fun so funny. lots of yeah. fun moments in yeah. in, in that but tour it, but uh, you know he the, although he was uh, slow and you <laughs> pissed off you, you still remained friends and ended up marrying him <laughs> i know i know yeah no he truly wasn't a mountain biker at that time to be frank so he just didn't right. know how to ride uphill chill yeah. that you just drop all gears and you just chill up <laughs> uh, yeah nice. this was in uh, 2015 yeah 2015 as well yeah nice, nice. yeah yeah no uh, and coming back to uh, bbc h mm. uh, and uh, riding in bangalore mm. right so um, i remember a uh, few of your earlier uh, early races and you talked you also mentioned uh, spending uh, time uh, spending time in no man's land <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to chase the front group <laughs> uh, all that so what was your most memorable uh, bbc h race i think the most memorable so a lot of them have like very individual memories but mm-hmm. the most memorable was i think uh, a race i did together with vicky and uh, samira mm. it was like uh, we the women used to start with the amateur men and i think it was also the classic race if i'm yeah. not mistaken and uh, we just ended up leading the race throughout and that felt like really great because it was also i don't think it was that the men wanted us to lead the race throughout i think they just had struggle keeping up and um and that was fantastic because sometimes there were breakaways from the men but we always managed to work together and and catch them and what that was a really 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 nice and rewarding feeling because yeah as you are aware there are very few women who um like race like i mean there are a lot of like uh female brm riders and heads off to them i couldn't do that mm. but there are very few who like take to the racing a uh, bit and um Vicky um was really an amazing mentor throughout like i mean it was fantastic to ride with her because we often worked together like for example we went for a desera ride in mysore and vicky wasn't feeling great mm. so she's like look today i'm working for you because i don't feel up for winning and so let's do just the strategy because it was the two of us and the others had like big teams in the women mm. and so it just feels so great to ride with someone with whom you can ride as a team as well and yeah. um yeah. and i think that stood out in that race as well that we actually like didn't ride against each other but we like kind of collectively rode against the men and then in the end, in the end uh, vicky like you know uh, sam uh, she sprinted off in the in the end and uh, yeah. won the race and then um i think i don't know whether vicky or me came second mm. but it also it doesn't but, matter to me honestly yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but uh, but it is uh, are, the three of you were re- really great combo um, mm. you guys were uh, uh, you know all three of you were really matched in terms of abilities um at least at that time and um, i think uh, vicky being a great mentor also you know uh, being a leader uh, and sort of mentoring uh, you both and actually a lot of other women as well in the bangalore scene at the time uh, really helped the uh, level of both of you when when you guys were just starting but then you you both you and uh, sam were quite young and uh, quite strong and mm. uh, although vicky had quite a bit of experience by then uh, you guys were able to keep up and also you know contribute uh, quite well there uh, i also remember some of the uh, team time uh, i think one team time trail you mm. you three did yeah yeah I, we did I think one you you guys uh, three ended up uh, beating uh, quite a few uh, no, other <laughs> men team yeah, yeah. Uh, it was really really fan- uh, fantastic and really heartening for me to see uh, you know the three of you are so strong like yeah, i i think i remember the race you mentioned uh, you know three of you leading the uh, amateur mm-hmm. group uh, so that uh, Uh, right now that was that for me was a golden period for uh, <laughs> uh, you know bbc h women's uh, mm. cycling uh, again i i was hoping that lot more 
women mm. would uh, you know show up uh, you know taking you guys uh, as inspiration mm. but uh, right now again there is a dip mm. in uh, uh, you know uh, raising participation as such. yeah yeah but like you said there are so many women participating in the long distance cycling um and some of them are actually coming to the races i think one of the itts uh, the individual time mm. trials they were i think 20 25 mm. women participating turned up and it was mind blowing mm-hmm. i i think Th- um they would have you know tasted that race yeah, in this thing yeah. and i am hoping they would also you know trickle come come into the road racing and stuff like that um, yeah. i think it is it, because when the numbers increase be it uh, whatever distance cycling or whatever i think it will naturally they will come yeah. to it yeah uh, yeah so that's a little bit about <laughs> my <laughs> thoughts mean, on yeah. That. yeah i think I someone think. i think someone like vicky is really missing because um she was really like a true sportswoman in the sense that it was about camaraderie mm. and not about like trying to be the best right. and that was like that is i think something i took a lot of inspiration in and so i'm like there's a wonderful photo as well of like i think it was the itt in 2019 when i was pregnant with kamini it was the yeah one of the last races i did uh, when before kamini was born and the the podium was i think abirami puja and then me or me and then puja i don't know mm. but like all three of us are laughing on the podium yeah. and because i just i don't care if i'm not first because i gave my i gave the best for myself at that time and i'm just like so happy to see other women yeah coming forward and also being strong and i know that every one of them has put in hard work and yeah. so yeah. it's absolutely i mean i don't really yeah it's yeah i think i think uh, i still see some of that uh, in women's cycling mm. which is actually quite great uh, you know like you mentioned abirami yeah she she did uh, you know she, it, those years were the her first uh, years in mm. racing now last year she did um, nationals and won bronze medal there mm. and uh, she also kind of you know helps um, other women in her mm. community like uh, you know i think nandini and mm-hmm. others uh, to kind of do well in racing right yeah. so i i think that is still i think maybe a, a, a woman thing <laughs> yeah i mean i think bbc h was actually has given rise to a lot of like women national mm. riding as well because i in fact i remember samira's first race like yeah. it was the crit at that bartia city oh yes and i had no idea who she was and yeah. that she was actually an athlete and i mean at that time it was her first race so yeah. she was far behind and what i used to do in those races is like like it was pointless for me to give everything because I, the yeah. other women were far behind so what's the point of me winning by half an hour margin so i would like every time i would pass one of them like be like yay you can do it you can do it <laughs> and two seasons later she was the national champion and yeah. i would be like far behind <laughs> but yeah. yeah so like i remember those uh, that yeah that, 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 that was uh, funny uh, it was uh, her first race um actually her first ride on a road bike i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was a bbc h race i yeah. remember uh, she actually cra- crashed Crash, on, yeah, one of, on one of one the of U-turn. those round, roundabouts yeah. yeah you know i also crashed on that one of those mm-hmm. roundabouts uh, and i won the masters uh, podium <laughs> and she won the women's podium yeah. there and it it was her first ride on a road bike you know i think we have a lot of such stories uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, at bbc uh, i think it was truly a yeah i did the yeah. downhill race also once i was the only <laughs> woman doing the downhill race so i, I won <laughs> so yeah. i was far behind but it was again it was like nice to see the to just be the part of the community and right right get the support mm. yeah excellent so once you kind of um, uh, started um, riding more mm-hmm. uh, and kind of t- started training for uh, bbc uh, you know how how much time were you spending like 
riding training hmm. apart from the usual commutes of course i mean i think you would know <laughs> because you were my coach and i logged my races and my rides to you yeah. um i mean i think i had like three or four training days a week like i mean yeah. most of it on the on the train or I used to do a lot on the airport road as well because mm. I used to work in NCBS at that time as well so I would just like do the the intervals on the on the airport road and then yeah no no I remember those days very much <laughs> and still every time I take it with a car I'm like it's so bloody long with a car yeah it just feels so much shorter with a bicycle right. no but I really enjoyed like it made a huge difference for me to start that structured training with you like people sometimes ask like oh how much of a difference does it really make um I think it does make a huge difference um just because you have a goal as well like you have a goal in mind for for your sessions and it's a lot easier if you sort of know okay i need to do one minute this five minute this one minute this i'm better outdoors than on the trainer i must yeah. uh, confess um yeah. um but uh yeah so yeah i remember the uh, you know those years i think uh, six late 16 yeah, and 17 16. Uh, yeah we started in late late 15 or wait we No, we start, which was my first TFN, 16? I did 16, 17, 18, no? Yeah. Yeah, so then we started structured training, I think, like a few months before TFN. Right. And yeah. I had the, in October, I bought the Surly Pacer from Rajnikant, yeah. where he said it was the first uh, Surly Pacer that came to India. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm never going to sell it. Yeah. Um, and at that time, we also we used to do a lot of Nandi training. I know, yeah. like, how I used to, like, do, like, Nandi repeats even, like, and then right. half repeats and full repeats. Repeats and um, and how I also remember like I also did the first ever Nandi ride of Samira with her and at that time I was still in mountain bike mode so I was like yeah you go so I like rode up chill in like 32 minutes or so and then there was the Nandi ITT and uh, I rode up in 27, uh, 27 minutes yeah, yeah. And, uh, but my Garmin, I think, didn't record it. So I couldn't put it on Strava. And I was like, damn it, I'm never going to make such a good time ever again. <laughs> It's not there on Strava. But then I did, I did it uh, below 27 one, one day, which was recorded on, on Strava. So, yeah. um, yeah, so those were the days. It was really fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those were the days, of course. And uh, a lot of, uh, I think, 2016 yeah uh, tfn was uh, your first big event that you yes uh, yes yes we were preparing for. yes yes and uh, you i remember you did quite uh, quite well there what was the experience like I can tell you my most favorite memory from from uh, TFN because uh, everybody was like crazy about Kalahati and you said like very kindly to me like don't worry about your time you just like ride up and your game your goal is like that you don't get off the bike and uh, it so happened that Arim Bateja had a really bad day that day yeah. so I cycled and first uh, he started before me and then Jamie overtook me Jamie was there And, uh, but I was in good spirits because I'm like, I'm not racing. So I'm just riding up. And then I saw Aaron ahead of me and I was like, oh, he looks like he's struggling. And then I continued riding and I overtook him. I smiled and waved at him. And I came up Kalahati and it was an okay time. And I was like, oh, this is actually not bad. And so... <laughs> yeah, see, if you, if you don't uh, uh, actually worry about it um. and... Uh, Of course, if you have the gearing for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you will be fine. You yeah. know, what happens uh, on a climb like that is, one, it is, of course, it is hard. Mm. But the fact that you are afraid of it weighs a lot more than actually it being hard. Yeah, I mean, the first Kalahati was my easiest, I must yeah. say, yeah. because I had like this mindset. I was also, I was just trying to think of happy moments in my life to not like, focus on that and so it really got me up smiling the next year was hard yeah. like was really hard where i was trying to be fast but i think i did like i did a one hour 27 or so which is okay i think yeah. um and the third year i was reasonably unfit i think and anand told me a shorter distance than it was yeah. so i kind of was like okay i'm still doing okay and then i was like wait I'm not there, but like kilometers are up. And then like, I think two turns before the finish, I started crying on the bike and I was yelling at Anand all the 
as like you bloody bastard it makes a difference whether it's like 0.6 or 0.8 <laughs> in this case and like yeah i think it's even captured in the official like uh video of the of that kalahati how i just like cry in the fin in the oh, finish man, because I, I, I think hemings I, also cries yeah, <laughs> I, i remember because um it is actually when you are giving your 100% mm -hmm. on kalahati uh it you i think you end up uh, you know in tears on the top because yeah. you're so elated to yeah. just complete it <laughs> yeah. i remember you see uh, seeing you and um, yeah hemings also i think 2018 yeah, was yeah. the year uh, at the finish line yeah. uh, you uh, uh, nikhil was there right yeah. <laughs> <He> was crying <laughs> i just, know i was, was so spent. done yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. man it, yeah. you know kalhati i think is etched in all of our memories <laughs> for, forever <laughs> and nikhil never did it so we have to go and ride it with him yeah yeah we have to uh, get him up there right yeah now. yeah He, he, wh wh how come he did not do it because the 2000 he, did, he was part of tfn right so 2016 when we rode together was the tfn where mikhail had his accident so ah yes i remember so mikhail he, had his accident so he, the, nikhil and, was the guy who stopped to help him yes because he was right there uh, correct yeah. he was right there and i saw him standing there mm -hmm. and that's why i kind of went out <laughs> I, i was like okay someone is there yeah. and i i saw mikhail uh, talking as well. yeah. uh, so i just kept yeah, going yeah. and i think and it was like oh good i have an uh, excuse <laughs> where no one can say anything <laughs> and i saw uh, anand up Mm -hmm. uh, near uh, you know he was tired and was mm -hmm. standing in the uh, bison point i said anand go down uh, help nikhil mm -hmm. uh, you know me, uh, someone crashed and then i think he was happy going down <laughs> <laughs> I know oh, that also reminds me of one I think it was also a TFN memory like Anna is like such a good downhiller and on the road bike I'm not such a good downhiller and so we like rode uphill and Anna like just made it up and then it went down and he was like hasta la vista baby and he like starts descending and there's a turn and after the turn it goes up and he literally just <laughs> stops and gets off his bike and it's like oh. <laughs> So. <laughs> that is so anand <laughs> yeah no no tfn is like full or the my racing time or my cycling time in, in india is such as so full of like uh, loving memories and yeah definitely unique memories definitely. yeah so yeah the, there are so many uh, memories i think that we can make on the bike right it is yeah and uh, events like bbch races and tfn i think they kind of uh, yeah give us the platforms to make more you know, yeah. memories i think i remember a race that i wasn't even racing but you and dugal and nikhil i think it was like uh towards the tour of glory start side yeah yeah, yeah the hassan highway uh, may uh, bbc h race in 2016 yeah where yeah. dugal like is, was like pushed away in the sprint and right. then in the return like he uh, said eventually yeah. like got the got the win but i think you did a great job there working together as well yeah so me risho and uh, nikhil were working for dugal hmm. and that was that was a race where everything went really well because i did the uh, work at the front chasing the breakaway uh, for the first 50k and uh, by the by the time we uh, took a u turn and uh, you know did uh, maybe another uh, 5k or something like that i was dead <laughs> <laughs> my, i my legs seized because we were going quite hard mm -hmm. uh, chasing the breakaway and um, nikhil and risho uh it was the plan that we talked about i think i i will do the majority of, of work keep things in control uh the first half of the race but you boys take the care of uh, dukal in the second half any breakaways you you mm. guys control and those guys did a fantastic job because we in the weeks before we actually simulated the conditions we did race simulations and all that and it went pitch perfect and uh, th thankfully dugal uh, 
had the legs and despite some controversy he was able to <laughs> <laughs> win it yeah it was yeah. so you you and um, you were in the car is it that... yeah i didn't race because i had some imaginary knee problems i think <laughs> in uh, the aftermath i was like why didn't i race but yeah. uh, But That's nice. okay. Yeah, that was one of the most memorable uh, races uh, for most of us, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So <clears throat> now, um, when when was your last BBCH race? My last BBCH race was actually last year. The ITT. I was pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I came fourth or so like uh, Vidya was there no I came third because I was there for the podium. Right. Uh Vidya was there and uh Anusuya. Mm-hmm. Um was there. Yeah, so that was a race I, and I, I had actually planned to do the TTT with Pooja and Prachi like this year but it didn't the TTT didn't happen didn't so happen. Yeah. so far um but I started yeah I started commuting back to work and uh Nice. I set up the trainer so yeah so between the all those uh, TFNs and the BBCH races that we talked about and now the bar races and the bar races <laughs> no, no, I, no. <laughs> yeah and the bar races and all that uh, you had two kids hmm. you and Nikhil and uh, two nice wonderful kids <laughs> uh, and now you are slowly getting back to yeah. more uh, you we got back to commuting yes and uh, slowly you know so as you find time uh, managing the kids and work and everything you will get back to yeah. training and uh, I racing want to. i think yeah. yeah yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to the day seeing you back in the racing <laughs> and uh, strong as ever <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe by that time nandi will be like you know <laughs> let's see who's faster them redoing the road or me <laughs> regaining my fitness yeah 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 i i think you you uh, by the way things are progressing there it uh, work <laughs> i think you have enough time to <laughs> yeah get back all your fitness mm. uh, but what are the things that helped you in kind of managing uh, your work see being a re- mm-hmm. research uh, student mm-hmm. and then uh, you know completing your phd and all that uh, is a lot of work right and also you started working uh, as a scientist and all that but you managed to put in the training mm-hmm. and you know did, did quite well so how did you kind of manage the time and stuff Um I mean I feel there are two things like I feel one is like just putting that time for exercise and effort actually makes me stronger at work because I would if I were only to work it just wouldn't be fulfilling for me and that would make me frustrated which would have a negative impact on my work because in a way science is also a creative um job because you always need to think of like how do I answer the question how do I design my experiments to get an answer to the to the question I'm raising and uh, so you do spend a lot of time in the lab i mean where you walk around in the lab and work standing but it's not that you do any exercise and for me um like just this physical component just made like gives my mind space and one can i mean <laughs> forgive me but road biking is really something where you can just switch off your head <laughs> a bit like mountain bike is great fun because it's just like so whole holistic and yeah. in terms of you need to like use your mind you need to focus all the time and you yeah. use your entire body while on the road bike sometimes especially like for 20 minute efforts or so it's like you really just switch on your legs and then you're like yeah. okay fine let's keep going <laughs> so but it's a it's a great space to like really like um uh open your mind and reflect on on your work without being like distracted by uh your family at home or by like anything at home so it was like to me also true me time mm. and time where i could challenge myself in in different in different ways like not cognitive but physically mm. that's one component and the other component is especially for the racing i must say that i'm extremely grateful to nickel mm. because very often like uh, he put my racing in front of his racing or training which means that there were races where he didn't participate to be able to um Uh, be my support like one of the nandi races for example i did quite well again with the amateur men and then just before we uh, went into nandi i i had a flat and he was there in the car and he just swapped my wheel and i like could catch up with the yeah. man on the climb again yeah. 
um and uh, he drove with me to all the races and um even now like i had started training when uh, between kamini and kabir as well mm. and so i could leave him alone in the morning with kamini so it was fine we had to set up like every alternate morning like he could do yoga or whatever he wanted and i went out uh, uh, cycling so um i think without that i wouldn't have been able to do so well yeah yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah so that kind of uh, i i remember uh, the time where uh, he would ride one day and you would ride the next day <laughs> and you were uh, you know uh, uh, taking care of the kid that uh, all, mm. you know, the other time yeah so that that was quite uh, uh, quite nice and um, now that uh, you know you were thinking back of you know slowly uh, um, coming back to training mm. and stuff and with two kids and stuff what what are the kind of challenges that you see i am one is clearly time <laughs> time and also uh, energy in the sense that like uh, i started working from office three days as well and mm. so then i leave the house at 8:30 i come back i come back by like 5:45 so um then the time i kind of want to spend with the kids and to then say so, okay now at 10 pm i sit on the trainer i haven't gotten to it yet also because i mean multiple reasons one i'm just not so good on the trainer, trainer yeah. and um i'm also like in terms of watching this even with watching something i can do 45 minutes yeah. but then like at the moment there is nothing which is dumb enough that i can watch it <laughs> on the trainer but still entertaining enough yeah. that i continue riding yeah. no but that's a bad excuse yeah. so i think basically it's like with cycling like it is like once i start the habit habit then mm -hmm. i will be in it again right. it's like you just need to sort of say okay every second day i start even if i just 10 minutes yeah. i just want to sort of like get into that rhythm again and so for that this commuting has helped me already like so far i have i have cycled to work every single day and so that itself yeah. is uh, yeah that that's a that's a good start yeah. and uh, uh, you know talking of indoor i don't i don't know any peop, uh, anybody who enjoys indoor riding uh, but it it does help uh, <laughs> because of you know that time saving yeah. that you kind of uh, um, get and also you can ride any time of the day if you yeah. wish yeah yeah exactly and the, yeah see i think one of the things that and um uh, help me nowadays is the fact that uh, telling myself uh, something like okay sweat every day or something <laughs> like that right okay if i am able to maybe find that 30 minutes and mm -hmm. put in a hard effort on the trainer okay that's mm -hmm. that's it okay i'm done for the day yeah, yeah. and uh, you know i think maybe something like that would help you get yeah. get back there but um, yeah Yeah. yeah and that way maybe it's uh, instead of time it's attitude <laughs> because like yeah. to be honest like 15 or 30 minutes is something that uh, one can yeah. make every day and even if you don't do a hard workout to just like get your body moving again yeah so, so. then a lot of us uh, tend to think that unless it is like one hour or no. more it it is not really worth it but no it is not right you any any time is still is going to be time that you are spending uh, you know sp you are spending calories and you are spending your uh, exercising mm -hmm. so it is not going to be wasted but if you kind of put in some structure it gives more yeah. more uh, you know value out of the time that you are spending on yeah 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 No, I remember with Kamini even like I used to put her next to the trainer because it's a sort of zzz yeah. <laughs> sound to put her to sleep. <laughs> no, yeah. No, is this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, a structured training plan also definitely helps because then it's not you don't need to think like okay, so what am I going going to do in this half an hour? Mm. It's just clear. Okay, I need to do this this and this. Yeah. And so yeah. Yep, yep, that helps. All right, I wish you all the best for uh, uh, with your work as well as the young family that you're raising and your fitness goals as well. And you? do you have any uh, tips for working athletes uh, like <laughs> like yourself and myself? Um I mean, I really like if you can commute, I would think just commute. I mean yeah I think uh, that's the least uh, to to just like also re 
keep the 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 road um the feeling of the road yeah. that you sort of lose when yeah, you're like yeah. on the trainer and uh yeah make the time right it make is the there yes. make the time it's in the end i think it's beneficial for your professional life as well yeah to have a physical activity yeah i think that that yeah that thing about commute is very important uh if you can of course but uh, it really helps uh for me my cycling journey has started with a commute and it has kind of helped me i uh, never looked back once i started the uh, riding and uh, still now uh, the commute is uh, bicycle is what kind of keeps my sanity if and it comes to bangalore traffic yeah. <laughs> tell me about it oh yeah oh my god so a uh, couple of i think uh, a month or so in between i was injured and i had i decided i actually crashed while commuting and then uh, decided okay i'll take the company transport until i heal up and uh, <laughs> as it turned out some of the days it took 2 3 hours one way and you are spending 2 hours sitting and it became too unbearable for me and actually cut short my whatever planned mm-hmm. one month and actually got back on the <laughs> bike yeah, immediately yeah. so yeah it helps and again thank you for taking the time and thank you for inviting me <laughs> Thank you for your interest. If you are enjoying this, please make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube. The channel name is Bikey Winky B I K E Y V E N K Y. It really helps. Also, please make sure you subscribe to the Working Athlete podcast on your favorite podcasting app. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music and every conceivable platform. Again, thank you for your support.